Hi there, I'm Black Pride broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. Got some fantastic news for my return subscribers. They've stopped the deportation flight. Boyaka, boyaka. Can you imagine? They've actually stopped the flight. It's not going ahead. The charter flight that was headed for Jamaica tomorrow has been stopped. Tell you boy, when I tell you say prayer is good, I don't know what happened, but I do. Um, let me just read out the petition letter that was sent out to all of the um, people in Parliament. Okay, it was dated. Well, it was. It's, the heading is "Stop the Charter Flight to Jamaica." 11th of February 2020, which is tomorrow. Talk about, you know, the um, midnight oil. Anyway, dear Member of Parliament, I am writing as a constituent to ask that you urgently oppose the removal charter flight due to deport up due to deport up to 50 people to Jamaica on Tuesday the 11th of February 2020. Mass deportation flights cannot continue to be an everyday function of the state. They have led to serious miscarriages of justice, premature deaths and they remain the violent hands of the hostile environment. As you will be aware, on Thursday the 6th of February, protests organised by Barack UK, the Society of Black Lawyers, Momentum Black Caucus and BAME Lawyers for Justice, BAME is Black and Minority Ethnic, were held in Whitehall, supported by members of Parliament, trade unionists and families impacted by the deportations. Protest and demonstration have made clear that the Home Office continues to destroy lives, personal finances and tear families apart through unlawful detentions and forced deportations. But the government continues to ignore this as part of its continued assault and dehumanisation of migrants, racialized people and all those who belonging to the British soil can be questioned. Details, emergence, details emerging from activists, journalists and whistleblowers have indicated sustained attempts to prevent access to justice and people detained for people detained at Harmonsworth and Colebrook immigration removal centres as they have faced this significant disruption to the phone signal and connections on basic phones issued to them on detention. This has left detainees unable to contact lawyers and families to access appropriate legal advice and emotional support. As Zita Holborn of Barack UK has argued, nearly all of those people being forcibly detained and deported will be people who are currently going through appeal processes and seeking to regulate their immigration status. Many of these detained will have lived in the United Kingdom since childhood. Among the identified potential deportees included a father of two British children, a former UK soldier who had been medically discharged and a blind man who has been told that he could be cared for by his elderly grandmother in Jamaica despite her having medical evidence which undermines this. Holborn also writes that one of the deportees was born in the UK and his mother is from the Windrush generation and that this flight will separate more than 40 children from their parent with the British government telling people that they can parent these children via Skype. Can you imagine parenting children by, via Skype? How ridiculous is that? Furthermore, a leaked report commissioned further to the Windrush scandal strongly recommended that the government must end the practice of deporting people who arrived to the United Kingdom as children, as it is evident 
that many of the people scheduled to be placed on the removal charter flight would be allowed to stay in the UK after the implementation of the Windrush report. It must be an obligation. It must be an obligation for this government to suspend deportations until this process is completed. The Prime Minister has claimed that the anticipated deportees are all serious criminals. The evidence has emerged that this is not the case, and deportees include those who have been convicted for minor drug offences. Regardless, the severity of one's criminal history should not serve as a premise for deportation. Exiling criminals does nothing to resolve and prevent the social ills endemic in British society. And a deportation further to a prison sentence not only speaks of object failure, abject failure of the prison estate to function as a tool for rehabilitation and reintroduction to society, but functions to racially, to racially other those that doesn't make sense. I don't know, maybe they mean auto. But it says to racially other those undes undesirable criminals who can be determined as not British enough. Further, criminality describes the relationship between an inhabitant and the state. It is often defined by the breaking of a stringent and unworkable immigration laws. In this way, deportations on the basis of criminality often have little to do with justice or protection for victims, but unchallenged obedience to state doctrine and a commitment to standards of behaviour under the threat of exile, which do not exist for white British citizens. These deportation flights are a matter of life and death as was reported in 2018. 11 people of the Windrush generation who were wrongly deported were found to have died. As The Guardian has reported this week, only 3% of the Windrush claimants have so far received compensation. By continuing to deport people to their deaths, this government has made clear that it has learned no lessons from the Windrush scandal and intends to continue a regime of terror against black Caribbean people and all racialized others through extending the hostile environment. Descriptions of the inhumane and brutal treatment of elderly black Caribbean people continue to trouble me and I imagine many of my fellow constituents I therefore ask how, using your parliamentary capacity, you will address the issue of justice for victims of Windrush to ensure their right to return to the UK with permanent right to remain citizenship and full financial compensation for the losses of them and their families. As a consultant, I urge you to immediately write to the Home Secretary calling for the cancellation of the 11th of February flight and to advocate for an end to all charter flight mass deportations and all aspects to the hostile environment. I also urge you to attend the second reading of the Windrush Compensation Scheme Expenditure Bill on Monday, February the 10th. That was today. I further urge you to advocate for clear policy ensuring the protection of those from the Commonwealth countries who migrate and begin lives in Britain. Regards. So that was the letter. And then I got a text, a WhatsApp from Lawrence Palmer that said. Sky News latest. The, T the deportee flight scheduled for tomorrow morning has been postponed until all 50 deportees have had access to legal representation. Seeing as the UK government deliberately blocked mobile phones access to their lawyers more than five days ago. Tell you there is a God. 
So I am so pleased about that. So I, once I saw that, I thought, oh, I wonder if it's true. I wonder if it's just something going around. Looked on the news, couldn't find anything, found something in February, found last year's, but could I find anything for today? But then I spied with my little eye and I found this. Court of Appeal overruled. I'm going to put the link down below. Detention action argued that detainees at Colebrook and Harmonsworth did not have functioning phones and therefore did not have access to legal advice. Lady Justine Smiler, Simler ordered the Home Office not to remove anyone unless satisfied that they had access to functioning non O2 SIM card on or before the 3rd of February. Activists also claim some of those facing deportation were as young as 13 when they moved to the UK. Bella Sankey, director of Detention Action, said, We are delighted with this landmark decision, which is a victory for access to justice, fairness and rule of law. What wonderful news! So, no deportation. The fly ain't going ahead. Can you imagine? How they must have vexed. Them have to put the arm, um, plea and pan, stand by. For how long? And you know how much that cost them? And the thing is, if they weren't so bloody nasty, if they hadn't tried to be so slick and stop those detainees from contacting the outside world. There is nothing to say if they contacted the outside world, they would have got through or they would have got help or the, the circumstances would have changed, but at least give them the opportunity. They were trying to be slick. Turn off the people and phone so they can't contact families, lawyers or nothing. And that is the reason why the plane is not leaving tomorrow because they they interfered with justice and their legal rights tell you why who would have believed i'm thinking nothing can stop this plane from flying that's what i'm saying you can imagine how much prayers was going out you can imagine and that we only heard about 50. Apparently there was 56. Goodness knows if there was more. And look, you know, the, the Ghanaian flight went, the Nigerian flight went, and the flight to France went, all those charter flights went. Jamaica stand strong. <laughs> anyway, that's all I've got to say. I just had to share that wonderful news with you. That's all for now. Bye-bye.